Awesome. All right. So thanks, everyone. Um, my name is Ryan Stiebick. I am a AWS Solutions Architect, uh, just like Jordan. Um, been with AWS a little over three and a half years, really focused on helping enterprise customers deploy their business workloads on AWS. Um, and I have a area of death in containerization using our AWS container services. Uh, so today I'm going to talk to everyone around extending AWS container services, not only to uh, our cloud regions, but how to operate those same services in your on-premises environments. So let's start off by kind of discussing the AWS Container Services. Um, AWS Container Services make it easier for you to manage your underlying infrastructure, whether that's on-premises or in the cloud. So you're really able to focus on innovation and your business needs, not infrastructure. So we have a whole suite of container services out there, but today we're really going to focus on this session on the container orchestration layer. And our two primary services in this area are Amazon Elastic Container Service, ECS, and Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, or EKS. So what customers tell us they really love around about Amazon ECS is the simplicity it provides. Amazon ECS delivers an AWS opinionated solution for running containers at scale. It reduces the time it takes for customers to de build, deploy, or migrate their containerized applications to AWS. Amazon ECS powers a growing number of popular AWS services under the hood, and is trusted by hundreds of thousands of customers, some like Nerd Wallet, Autodesk, Volkswagen, and many more. Teams choose Kubernetes for its vibrant ecosystem. Um, it's got a great community, consistent open source APIs, and broad flexibility. They rely on Amazon EKS to handle the undifferentiated heavy lifting of securing and operating Kubernetes at scale. Customers like Snap, the makers of Snapchat, HSBC, GoDaddy, they all trust Amazon EKS to run their most sensitive and mission critical applications on the AWS platform. So going a step deeper into each of these, um, Amazon ECS, as I mentioned, is that AWS opinionated solution for running containers at scale. It's really been designed from the start for simplicity. Using Amazon ECS will really decrease the number of decisions customers must make around compute, um, networking, security configurations, all those things you need to operate container workloads without sacrificing scale or features. It's a fully managed containerized orchestration service that is deeply integrated into the AWS environment. It allows you to use the tools and services you're familiar with from AWS, IAM, Elastic Load Balancing, CloudWatch, VPC, and more. You even have options around fully serverless deployments um, like AWS Fargate, which is our serverless compute option for containers um, to either further reduce management overhead and really get away from managing really any infrastructure. All this comes with the security and compliance levels you really have come to expect from AWS. Amazon EKS, on the other hand, is a managed service that is really designed to make it easy for you to run Kubernetes on AWS without having to install and operate your own Kubernetes control plane or worker nodes. Amazon EKS provides the flexibility of Kubernetes, but with the security and resiliency of being the AWS managed service. There's a couple of key attributes that customers really appreciate about Amazon EKS. Um, first off, we do not modify open source Kubernetes. Um, EKS is fully upstream certified conformant Kubernetes. So all the existing plugins from the community, tooling, um, any applications that run on Amazon EKS are fully compatible with applications running on any standard Kubernetes environment, whether that's something you may be running today in your on-premises data centers or other public cloud providers. We support upstream versions for a longer period of time. Currently, we support four versions of Kubernetes. Um, this gives our customers significant time to roll out updates as they become available. As part of this support cycle as well, um, we will backport patches, fixes, and upgrades to any of the supported Kubernetes versions, even ones that may not be currently supported by the community itself. We provide a managed Kubernetes experience where we do a lot of work on the AWS side to select the right Kubernetes components, versions, validate different dependencies um, to ensure that the security, stability, and the operational excellence that our customers rely on us to deliver 
is all bundled into that EKS experience. And overall, we really, our goal is to make Kubernetes operations as simple and boring as possible. Um, Kubernetes definitely can be complex. So with Amazon EKS, it's really our goal to kind of remove all that complexity and let you focus on what's really driving that business value. So while customers love our cloud-based services, ECS and EKS, many of our customers in their modernization and cloud migration journeys still have that need to run a portion of their workloads on-premises. This is primarily due to a couple of reasons. Um, one of them, customers expecting their cloud migration. Sometimes they expect it to be a long-term journey and they have existing investments in their data center around different hardware and they may not expire in the short term. These customers often will like to continue to utilize this physical hardware um, for as long as possible to, to really maximize its usage and value to them. Other customers often in regulated industries, such as like financial, gaming, healthcare, are often bound by different regulatory or maybe data residency requirements, which necessitate them running container workloads constrained to certain boundaries, maybe a data center, a, a certain region of the globe, um, somewhere there may not be an AWS region um, specifically. Other times, some workloads are very latency sensitive in nature and, and customers have to deploy uh, their applications close to maybe their physical on-premises environment where they may have physical machines that these applications need to communicate with. Um, great examples of these are uh, manufacturing where applications need to connect with the physical machines <clears throat> or telecommunications as well as a, an industry where this is very common in. So all these requirements can lead to customers having to run or manage multiple disparate container orchestration tools, one in their cloud environment and one in their on-premise environment. And this is really can provide a disparate experience for customers. So we've developed solutions to kind of help support and provide consistency between cloud environments and on-premises environments. So AWS provides a number of different options around hybrid deployments from things like our edge solutions with our AWS Snowball Edge, um, even IoT specific options with AWS IoT Greengrass. Um, but today we're going to focus on two main options just due to the time we have available. Um, we'll focus on AWS Outposts, which Ron was discussing earlier, and then our ECS and EKS Anywhere solutions. So AWS Outposts, as, as we were talking about, is a family of basically fully managed infrastructure solutions delivering AWS infrastructure and our services to on-premises or edge locations for a truly consistent hybrid experience. This is basically the same infrastructure that we run in AWS data centers brought to your premises and managed by AWS, just like it was in an AWS region. Outposts are available in full 42U racks. Um, we also have options around 1U and 2U single servers. So with Outposts, you're gonna be able to use the same hardware infrastructure, APIs, tools, the, the management console, the different controls there, all those things that are available to you in the AWS cloud and how you may manage your applications from a AWS cloud in region experience. You're gonna get that with Outposts to provide a truly consistent developer and IT operations experience, no matter where your workloads are running at on AWS. You'll be able to extend the AWS compute, networking, security, and other services on-premises for those use cases where low latency, maybe local data processing or data residency needs are required. Here's an example of some of the different AWS services that you are able to run locally on Outposts from our, our managed database solutions, storage, um, EMR for analytics use cases, Lots of different options here. And as you can see, highlighted in orange here, um, you are able to run Amazon ECS and Amazon EKS for your container workloads on Outposts. So this will allow you to leverage the fully managed cloud control plane of ECS and EKS, but actually deploy your containerized workloads on container nodes that are running as EC2 instances on the Outposts. And this will be in your local on-premises environment. With EKS, it even goes a step further to provide you the option to actually run the EKS fully managed control plane locally on the outpost as well. So moving that control plane from a 
cloud deployed model to a local model on the outpost itself. This is all really designed to give you a consistent experience running container workloads in cloud or on the outpost. Um, no matter where your workloads run, you get that same consistent AWS management experience. So now we're going to talk about the, the anywhere services and air quotes. So this is really going to allow our customers who wish to continue to utilize their existing hardware um, instead of something like an AWS outpost to deploy ECS or EKS workloads in your on-premises environments. Amazon ECS Anywhere um, is a feature of Amazon ECS that enables you to run and manage container-based applications on-premises. It's going to be including in your own virtual machines and bare metal servers as well. With ECS Anywhere, you don't have to install or operate any sort of local container orchestration software, reducing that operational overhead that you would have of running it in different multiple environments. You get to use the same ECS tools, the same APIs, just as you would in the AWS region, but deploy those workloads in your on-premise environment, providing that consistent experience that our customers are looking for across environments. You can use ECS anywhere with any virtual machines, really. Think about virtual machines running on VMware, uh, Microsoft Hyper-V, uh, OpenStack, whatever it may be. Um, you can also use bare metal servers as well, running one of the supported operating systems. Uh, the ECS agent, which is basically the agent you install on your virtual machine or your physical servers, <clears throat> this is a software that's actually going to allow a host to connect back into the cloud managed ECS control plane. Um, that agent has been supported and tested on different long-term support releases of Amazon Linux 2, um, Ubuntu, Red Hat, uh, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, uh, on most of the common Linux distributions. Um, so this is a great option for you to kind of continue to manage that cloud centralized container orchestration control plane with ECS, but to deploy those workloads consistently in cloud and on-premises. Amazon EKS, on the other hand, is a deployment option for Amazon EKS that helps you create and operate Kubernetes clusters in your own on-premises infrastructure, whether it's directly on bare metal servers or using a virtualization layer. EKS Anywhere is based off of Amazon EKS Distro. EKS Distro is a distribution of the same open source Kubernetes and the dependencies that we deploy in our in-region Amazon EKS solution, our service. Um, this allows you to manually create Kubernetes clusters anywhere using the same exact version of Kubernetes that we run in cloud for EKS. We have just taken that same distribution and basically open sourced it for our customers to use anywhere. With EKS Anywhere, it takes that Amazon EKS distro version of Kubernetes and helps simplify the creation and management and ongoing operations of on-premise Kubernetes clusters. Basically, it's a set of tools to help you deploy, manage upgrades, and operate those EKS distro base Kubernetes clusters on any infrastructure. EKS Anywhere provides different deployment options to meet a variety of our different customer needs. Um, so there's uh, options for different virtualization stacks, VMware, uh, Apache Cloud Stack, and Nutanix. Um, bare metal servers are supported as well. Um, and AWS Snowballed Edge, that far edge, the solution that we talked about earlier. EKS Anywhere is a little different from ECS Anywhere in the fact that it is not agent-based like ECS Anywhere is. When you deploy a Kubernetes cluster, an EKS cluster using EKS Anywhere, it actually provisions the complete operating system and Kubernetes components for you. Um, so it's going to provision that complete virtual machine or it will install the operating system and the Kubernetes components on the bare metal server for you. So certain operating systems are supported today. Um, Ubuntu, you see called out here, Red Hat, and then Bottle Rocket. Um, Bottle Rocket is a, a minimalistic operating system developed by AWS for specifically for containerized workloads. Um, it has only the components needed for containerized workloads to kind of minimize the uh, attack exposure space and um, improve security of those workloads running on Bottle Rocket. 
So just as I was mentioning, there are some differences between ECS and EKS Anywhere and how they operate. So let's quickly talk through those. So in terms of control plane location, like I mentioned with ECS Anywhere, that's going to be an in-region, in fully managed control plane. That control plane will reside in region and your container nodes will connect to that control plane. With EKS Anywhere, it's a little different. The control plane is actually deployed locally on your virtual machines or your bare metal servers. Um, that is completely automated by the EKS Anywhere tools that are provided, but that control plane is local to your infrastructure. Uh, oftentimes customers ask about disconnected mode. Um, so that is whether your clusters have to be connected to the AWS region at all times. So with ECS Anywhere, it is a connected model. Um, that control plane does remain in a region, but if there was a disconnect for, say, maybe a fiber cut or whatever it may be, um, those containers will remain up, but no management operations are able to happen. So no container restarts, no scaling, those type of things uh, will not be available. EKS Anywhere um, does natively support a disconnected mode since that control plane is deployed locally. Um, you are able to easily support being disconnected from the AWS region and operations can continue as normal. Uh, control plane operations, things like upgrade, scaling of the control plane, redundancy, resiliency, all those things with ECS Anywhere, since it is fully managed, that is 100% provided by AWS as part of our managed service. With EKS Anywhere, um, since that is all on your hardware, that control plane is local, that is a customer responsibility, but AWS provides the tools with EKS Anywhere to automate and help manage those operations. So you may need to trigger a control plane upgrade, but AWS provides you the tools with EKS Anywhere to do so. Um, with worker instance, uh, where the actual container nodes run, availability, scaling, those type of things with ECS Anywhere, we talked about it's that agent-based deployment model. So that is going to be handled by you as the customer. Um, when you deploy those agents, how you upgrade those nodes will be something that's managed by uh, the customer side. EKS Anywhere, it's also managed from the customer's perspective, but AWS provides those tools with EKS Anywhere to automate those processes and help with that ongoing management responsibility of triggering things like upgrades. You'll trigger the upgrade and the automation tools will help with that process. Uh, support perspective, ECS Anywhere is a fully part of the ECS service, um, so AWS support is provided there. EKS Anywhere, uh, it says optional AWS support, and that is because EKS Anywhere is a fully open source offering. Um, so you can go ahead and get on GitHub today, download EC EKS Anywhere, and um, run that in your data center as you see fit. Um, but you do have the option if you would like AWS Enterprise support, you do have options for signing up for uh, an AWS provided support model for EKS Anywhere, but it is not required. Um, another thing I do want to mention is that when leveraging AWS for your container workloads, you do get access to a very broad set of services, technologies, and tools to build your containerized applications. Um, there's a lot here on the slide, but it does include things like Amazon ECR, Elastic Container Registry, which is our fully managed container registry or repository. Um, we have fully managed monitoring offerings like Amazon CloudWatch, our native uh, monitoring solution. And we even have fully managed offerings around popular open source tools like Prometheus and Grafana as well. And then we have a very broad AWS partner ecosystem. It's very rich, can help really augment any AWS capabilities and give you a broader choice of operational software for your containerized workloads. These are different open source projects and AWS partner projects that will really help container users take advantage of the different AWS services and provide additional functionality across uh, the foundational components or monitoring and logging, DevOps, CICD, security and networking. I'm sure you guys are familiar with lots of these different logos on the slide. So we've got a very broad AWS partner ecosystem for containers as well. And that's it with the, the short amount of time we had for this session today. Um, I hope you found the session informative. And if you have use cases requiring a need for any sort of hybrid brace containerized architecture, definitely happy to discuss that further with all of you.